These are metastatic nodes. And these are the future of Milsim. Alright, so what we have sitting here is LoRa, Long Range Radio Mestastic Nodes, which is a particular firmware. What these are is these are little radios that are used in smart homes and smart farms to send data and sensor information back to the mothership. Soil pH, how high the water is running, all sorts of things. But they've been given a firmware called Mestastic that allows them to mesh communicate with each other, meaning one radio sends out a signal, it hits another radio, that radio repeats the signal, and it repeats it several times to cover a lot of ground. They cost about 30 bucks before you end up throwing in batteries and whatever. These are about 60 with the case and in the, the ready can go condition. And what they do is they talk to an app on your cell phone. where we get a map we can see all the units around us much like ATAC we can draw points of course not there we go can label it you can send when it expires and you can send it out to everybody this works with zero cellular data it's all on the mesh radios so it's distributed there's no single point of failure the cell towers go down these still work um, on batteries or and people have set them up in various locations. A lot of them are hiding up on public land, stuck up in a tree with a battery pack and a solar panel to provide mesh network communication across the city of Denver. So what that does for us in Milsim is it gives us kind of an ATAC light, right? We can see who's on our map. We can see their text messages coming in. And we can do direct messages or we can send to the entire channel. And this system is encrypted. Um, it is AES-256 encryption, which is about as good as you're going to get um, for those who are interested in such things. But the kicker here is they have now put out an ATAC plugin for these, which allows you to do a man net. Right, a mesh mobile ad hoc network. Because the network is a mesh network, you don't need an ATAC server. You can run directly on the radios, much like some people do with um, Wi Fi, right? You can run your ATAC devices all on the same Wi Fi. Um, T Rex Labs had a little good piece on that. They also had a good piece on the difference between these radios and say Gotenna or the Beartooths. And for their use case, they were pushing the Beartooths, but for what we do, we don't need the range, the range and the extra features of the Beartooth. What we need is we need these out in the field and at 30 bucks a pop, people can afford to get them out there. Um, some of the other things you can do is this is configured as a GPS tracker. I've just got a cable to a uh, battery pack here, but you can run them on small. This is a really small battery. I'll get to that in a second. You can run them on small batteries. But I want you to think about a little 3D printed case for one of these. A couple magnets, a little 4 a.m. before game action, crawling around and sticking a couple of these units up under enemy vehicles that you want to have an idea of where they are on the game field. You can do that, and you can do that on the cheap. Um... They can also be set up to as sensors and send signals out to you. 
if something gets tripped, such as this pressure pad that's hooked up to this small one as a sensor. And when the pressure pad is stepped on, or in this case, rolled over for a vehicle, it's set for a lot of weight, it sends out a text to the system to let you know that whatever you're monitoring has been um, fired. And, you know, I can think of a couple places where it'd be really great to, and here it comes right now, tripwire six intruder zone six detected on my phone. But I can think of a couple places where it'd be really nice to know there's a vehicle coming down the road at your six. Um, they're really small and lightweight. This with the small battery pack, this ba battery pack will only be good for about an hour and a half of time on it, but it weighs 25 grams, which means it's droneable. You can put it on even a cheap $40 GPS drone, pop it up 100 feet, and get amazing coverage over a wide area. It's also light enough, and at 25 grams, you could put it on a couple helium balloons. Um, and they let, again, it meshes and allows you to talk. Here's a picture of uh, the McNeil Scout Ranch, right? Both AMS and Milson West have been doing events there. You can see this is where the AMS uh, tan talk was, thereabouts. You can see how if I, this is um, ATAC view shed with the antenna placed 15 feet on the ground, off the ground up a pole, you know, PVC pole or whatever, shows you the distance it covers. The next picture shows another node just off to the, off the map, or not off the map, but away, set up, and you can see between those two nodes, you will cover the entire field. Or, in the same location, you run one of these up 75 feet. In this map, you can see it's one is going to cover the entire field. So there's a lot going on here. Um, I've got a whole bunch of links going, but this is something you need to be paying attention to because this is going to be a thing. And the ability to run ATAC off these so you can um, use them at, at open games, at open play, and train on your weekends like you're going to fight when you go to the big ops. And that's something we miss a lot here in Milsim is... Sometimes a lot of this gear only comes out for the big game or two and people aren't using it and aren't learning to use it as well as they could as if it was part of their weekly routine at their local field. Uh, on the drone thing, there's a link down below on this picture, which is from the Marine Corps. And they're doing, you know, they're going, you're using GoTenna, which has more range. But the concept is sound, and for the size of our operating areas at a game, we've got plenty of distance with these little radios. You can check out S2 Underground stuff on it, about in the middle of his piece. Um, he's got a great thing showing real world examples on why this is kind of becoming a thing, why this is um, being looked at, and the reality is why it's so hard to track these can't really break the encryption. You can't shut them down. You can find maybe one guy with them, but everyone else has one. They can't shut off the communications. It's such a thing. There's a report also down in the bottom here in the comments that talks about how the government is putting these as a big a danger to the government as 3D printed guns and the ability of wrongdoers to do bad things because it allows them to communicate. And check out the comms channel stuff in the bottom. Constellation's response is really good. And 68 Whiskey just dropped a new video. And they've got some really good stuff in there. I, I'm not going to show you how it all works. Because these guys have done a much better job. I'm just saying, get on this. This has a lot of possibilities for us. And the ability to make a lot of cool gadgets and whiz gizmos that will allow us to have a lot of fun on the field.